Hello everyone, in this video I want to show you how you can call a C-sharp method in Blazor WebAssembly from JavaScript. Well, most of the time you can do without JavaScript in Blazor or you can you don't really have to resort to writing any JavaScript but there may still be cases in which it's necessary. So let's uh, assume a hypothetical situation where you have to do it. So we're in Visual Studio. Let's go to File, New, Project. Uh, let's choose this empty template. If you don't see it here, hopefully if you type Blazor, you can find it somewhere here. At least if you have uh, .NET 7 installed. So let's hit Next. Let's call it Blazor from JS. Next, default settings, as I said, .NET 7, let's hit create. And right away, let's close this and go to index.razor. So we imagine we have an HTML element and we want to track the size or the dimensions of that element. And based on that, we want to call a function or a method in C Sharp, in C Sharp Blazor. So let's use the text area element, which happens to be resizable by default. So um, um, it, will, it can be used like that out of the box. So we're going to have this text area element here. Let's go to code and the code section and let's um, create a reference to that element. So element reference text area and we're going to pass it to JavaScript. We're going to use the ref keyword here and over this text area we're going to have a diff that will you know basically act as some kind of status so let's say role status and it will display the current dimensions of the text area so Let's define two more fields here. Private integer width and height. So let's say width in pixels as well as the height. In pixels as well. Okay, so now let's write a method that will be called from JavaScript. So we have to make it public and uh, returns void or doesn't return anything, and let's call it text area resized. It's going to take two parameters width and height. And we're going to update the fields here, which is, you know, width equal to width and height equal to height. Right, so in order to for it to be discoverable through JavaScript, we have to decorate it with the JS invocable attribute. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Maybe just uh, let's just run it quickly to see what's going on. And then we're going to dive into JavaScript. Okay, so it's loading. And so the idea is as we resize this text area, the values here, the dimensions here will be updated accordingly. So let's go back to Visual Studio, to the WW root folder. Uh, right click add new item JavaScript file and let's call it index as well okay so in this index file let's say use strict 
and we're gonna create a class uh, called index as well and it's gonna take two parameters object reference uh, sorry, I have to over here in the constructor object reference and text area so the object reference is the reference to the entire component here or this entire page called index razor and now we're going to create an instance of resize observer and it will take an empty lambda function uh, I mean one without parameters uh, because it will have a body and we're going to say object reference invoke method and the name of the method is exactly the same as it's here so we're going to copy it over here and now just to keep it simple we're going to grab the text area and say client width as well as a client height and we're going to attach it to the text area element and as far as I know you cannot really create an instance of a JavaScript class directly through Blazor it supports only functions as far as I remember so we're going to export an instance of this class as a function so let's call it create instance we're going to take those two parameters as well and return it inside a new instance of this index class yeah so that should be it for for javascript for the javascript part i'm just using client width and client height to keep it simple too so it can uh, pass integers as values here we don't need any more precision really so it's just for demonstration purposes so coming back here uh, we uh, gonna create or we gonna override a protect the, one of the protected lifecycle methods of the component uh, it's gonna be on after render async let's just add the async keyword here and get rid of this part and we just want it to be called whatever we have inside this uh, method we want it to be executed only once um, after the initial render we don't want it to be executed when it's re-rendered so we're gonna say if not first render then return and now we want to load this index uh, file index.js file into blazor so in order to do that I'm going to say private i js object reference let's make it nullable let's call it js module so this will store um, this basically this module here index.js so let's use it but before we can use it we have to inject the javascript runtime ijs runtime so let's say await js invoke async and we're going to pass this here mm. import and now the name of this javascript file index j s so we can just check if it's null for some reason uh, well if it's null then we're gonna return if not we proceed 
and now we also need something like a reference to this entire component this entire page and we're gonna do that by using something called .NET object reference we're gonna pass index here make it nullable as well and call it self ref so this self reference will be passed to this function and this function will call this class with this constructor so self reference um, well for now we need also something to store the instance of this class because this JS module stores as it's uh, suggest as the name suggests on just this module called index JS so let's say private IJS in process object reference because we're using blazor WebAssembly. so JS I P instance so first maybe let's uh, actually create this self reference here so dot net object reference we're using this static uh, method create and pass this instance of the index component so now uh, let's create an instance of this class through this function we're going to say await js module invoke async and let's pass this here and we need to use the exactly the same name so create instance and we're going to pass self reference and the text area yeah. yeah right so let's try to run it and ask us to rebuild and now let's see nothing's really happening with those values yet and that's because we have to explicitly um, make this component uh, re-render itself basically so we have to say state has changed all right so let's save it now and hopefully it it's gonna work as you can see it's working quite well so maybe just to you know be completely correct about this example let's uh, implement the async disposable interface go down here async value task i async disposable dispose async and we're going to say if js module is not null then wait js module dispose async and let's do the same with the instance of our javascript class as for the uh, self-reference here i think we don't actually have to call this pose here and i actually uh, i'm actually pretty sure if we did it will throw an error uh, because um, it's most likely disposed of by uh, or on the JavaScript part at least as far as I understand so let's just rebuild it and see if it's still working yeah it is so that's it I hope you found this video useful and uh, I'll try to uh, post the link to the code used in this video in the description below. So thank you for watching and bye.